Athens, the Parthenon, an architectural miracle. The first building to be constructed on the Acropolis in 447 BC was the Parthenon. The new building was built on top of the debris of the previous Parthenon. Pericles assigned the renowned artist Phidias as overseer of the building works. But the architectural design was entrusted to the architect Ictinas and his helper, Kalimachos. Phidias took it upon himself to decorate the temple with elaborate sculptures, having many of his students and artists from all over Greece under his supervision many artists flooding in to work on such a unique monument. The Parthenon consists of a rectangular stylobate, or base, measuring 69 meters in length, 31 meters in width, and 11 meters in height. It includes 46 pillars, eight in its two facades and 17 along its other two sides. Each and every piece of the temple was made entirely from pentelic marble in the Doric style. Although the building seems to be perfectly symmetrical, this is not true from a geometrical standpoint. If we measure it with a ruler and compass, we will find that none of its lines are completely straight, none of the columns are identical, and they are not placed in equal distance from each other. For example, the colonnades begin at the bottom with quite a wide diameter, about 2 meters. They then open up a little in the middle, but are at their narrowest at the top, where they measure 1.5 meters in diameter. Interestingly, the base has a slight curvature outwards, which probably served as a draining method for rainwater, whereas the pillars are slightly curved inwards, in a way that served to perfectly support the heavy roof. If the colonnades were even higher, they would have created a pyramid with its top reaching 400 meters from the ground. If we take into consideration that our pyramid is the most solid geometric shape that exists, we see why the Parthenon is almost untouched by earthquakes and extreme weather phenomena. Above the columns and colonnades stood the frieze, decorated with engravings which portrayed the preparation of the procession toward the Acropolis that took place during the Great Panathenea, a festival in honor of Athena. On the pediments of the two facades, the triangular spaces formed on the roof at each end of the temple, the east pediment over the entrance of the temple depicted the birth of Athena from the head of Zeus, and the west one showed the contest between Athena and Poseidon for the role of patron of the city. The sculptures were tended to by the great Phidias himself. Inside the temple, there were two distinct compartments. The smaller of the two was on the west side and was called Opistodomos. It was used as a treasury where they kept the monetary contributions of the Delian League, their allied cities, and the private resources of wealthy Athenian residents. This is where we first see 
as we enter the sacred rock. The central part of the temple, though, was the East Room. It extended 100 feet, or about 33 meters in length, earning its name as Hecatobedon, or 100-footer. At the end of that room called Sela, there was an altar in honor of the goddess Athena, and the famous chryselephantine, meaning made of gold and ivory, statue of Athena Parthenos, which Phidias made especially for this room and was placed last. The construction of the Parthenon took 10 years to complete, finishing in 437 BC, although Phidias continued to ornament it for a few years more. The monument was characterized by its highly colored decorations, not the plain white marble we see today. Trying to accurately depict the colors is very difficult, so we can only make assumptions about what they looked like. The same is true about the statues and engravings, which are destroyed and lost permanently. Even so, it is worth envisioning what such wondrous monuments would have looked like. In fact, what it lacks makes us admire it even more. Since, if in the state it is now it fills us with wonder, we can only imagine its splendor at the height of its glory. <laughs>